Today, I will be going through and cleaning some of my glassware that I've neglected for quite a while now. I have some beakers from previous slide experiments that I've run, but also these test tubes from my sodium chlorate and gummy reaction videos. I tried washing all of these items with just water and soap in a sink, and obviously it had no effect. So here we are now. I'm going to start with the beakers. In the first beaker, there is some gray, metal-looking residue on the bottom that's a bit hard to see here. In the second, you can see some blue salt of sorts, probably copper. Because both dissolve in acid, I added some hydrochloric acid and diluted it with a bit of water. In beakers 3 through 6, there appeared to be some sort of organic contamination in each. I figured I could use a strong base, sodium hydroxide, to clean this up. So, to each beaker, I added a couple of pellets of sodium hydroxide, and made a solution by adding a little bit of water. You can see that beaker 3 has a pink color form in the presence of the base, meaning I probably had some phenolphthalein in there at some point. I then shook all the beakers a bit, and let the sodium hydroxide dissolve, and get working on cleaning overnight. Then, I moved on to the test tubes, which were in far worse condition. Again, these were used in my gummy and sodium chlorate videos, so there is carbon residues, hot glue, and plenty of other organic junk stuck in each of these tubes. Because I had six different test tubes, I decided to try something out different in each. In the first two, I added some hydrochloric acid. In the next two, I added some sodium hydroxide. And in the last two, I added some xylene, an organic solvent. I wanted to see which of the three would better remove the organics. I diluted the hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide, stoppered the xylene tubes, and then let everything sit for 24 hours. A day later, I came back and this is what everything looked like. Let's again start with the beakers. Unfortunately, the hydrochloric acid in beaker number 1 had no effect whatsoever on the gray substance caked to the bottom. However, the copper salts in number 2 were completely removed with the hydrochloric acid. To take care of beaker number one, I used my brush on the residues and they came off pretty easily. Beaker number two was just washed with a little bit of water. The sodium hydroxide treated beakers did not fare as nicely, as each one of them had a little bit of residue left. So I took my brush back out and got scrubbing. And then I add some water, and then scrub some more. I repeat this for each beaker only two of which I include the footage for here because it's pretty mundane. In the end, all the beakers were pretty clean and I moved on to the test tubes. At first glance, the tubes definitely don't look that much cleaner. I shook up each of the tubes and you can see in the hydrochloric acid treated ones, not much really happened. In the sodium hydroxide treated ones, some carbon debris broke free which was definitely a positive sign. The xylene treated tubes also had some debris, but much less than the sodium hydroxide. So it was time again to get scrubbing. This time I used a glass stir rod to break off bits of the residue on the sides of the first two tubes. Then I dumped whatever debris and liquid I could out and tried to go into the test tube with a brush to clean out as much as possible. I learned quickly this was a bad idea with the smaller tube at least, because I managed to crack it when I tried to pull the brush out. Tube number two did a bit better, and I was able to remove some of the residue, but not the hot glue that was stuck at the top of the tube. I repeated this whole process of breaking up the debris with glass rods, emptying, and scrubbing with tubes number three and four, and these looked much better in the end. Again, the sodium hydroxide treated tubes were much more clean. Then I did this entire process again with the xylene treated tubes. As you can probably tell, this is some really repetitive work. Afterwards, the tube looked much better, besides the now broken missing tube number one. They're still not perfectly clean though, so I decided to soak them in some sodium hydroxide overnight, as it seems to clean out the residues best compared to hydrochloric acid and xylene. Instead of using water as a solvent, I actually used an acetone methanol solution. The purpose of this was to introduce a less polar solvent that could hopefully dissolve some of the leftover residues. Again, one day later I came back, and this is what everything looked like. The color change indicated that there was some residue in solution, but there was still some scrubbing to be done. Tube number two was more or less a lost cause because of the hot glue at the top. 
otherwise it was generally pretty clean. Tube number three was decently clean besides for this one piece of carbon residue towards the bottom. I decided to go after this with a metal spatula and brush, and after several minutes of scraping and scrubbing, I finally had a perfectly clean test tube. When working on the next tube, I realized how much of the dirt was actually on the outside of the tube. I decided to treat this with two different methods. First, I wiped it down with a paper towel with a bit of dilute hydrochloric acid on it. Then, I wiped the tube with a bit of ammonia to give it a shine, which I didn't actually show here. You can see on the inside of this tube, and in tube number 5, which I don't show, there appears to be debris actually fused into the glass. This is difficult to deal with, as it's very hard to remove this physically through scrubbing. It likely happened to very high temperatures when the glass was partially melted. So at the end, here's what we're left with. Tube number 2 still has a bunch of hot glue on it, which makes it more or less a goner. I may take a torch to it in the future to remove the glue, but for now I'm leaving it as it is. Tube number 3 is perfectly clean, along with number 6, the only two which I was able to completely clean out. Tubes number 4 and 5 had that residue bound to the glass that was difficult to remove, so I added some nitric acid as a last attempt which you can see in the tubes here. There were no visible changes within 24 hours though with the nitric acid, so I more or less left them to soak until I feel like dealing with them again. The final tube was almost completely clean, besides a little bit of dirt on the outside of the tube towards the top of it, which could easily be taken care of by simply wiping the tube down. At the end of the day, all of the beakers were entirely clean, which was the main goal of this endeavor as they were far more expensive. I didn't get lucky with the test tubes, but these are far more inexpensive, and I have plenty more I could use. For convenience though, in case you have any dirty glassware that's a pain to clean, I included each of the cleaning steps I used in order to clean each of these tubes. Before I end off this video, I just want to give a quick update on this channel. I'm currently recording one other video distilling phosphoric acid, but it's taking much longer than I expected. I've included a list of all my planned projects here in no particular order, which I'll hopefully be getting to in the new year. I'm more than happy to start working on a project that people want to see, so let me know which would be the most interesting. Otherwise, that's all I have for this video, so thanks for watching as always.